Good morning. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. Amen? Amen. That's our call to worship. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. It's prayer time. It's time to cast all our cares upon the altar. Father God, we come to you this morning as humble as we know how. Thanking and praising and lifting your name up again, Heavenly Father. Thank you for giving us another day. We adore you, Lord. Lord, we ask as we stand before you this morning, if there's anything that we've done that was not of you up until this moment, Heavenly Father, we ask that you forgive us, Lord. Lord, we ask you that you continue to work on us, Heavenly Father. Unchisel some of those hard thoughts, Heavenly Father, that our hearts still hold on to, Lord. We ask you to forgive us, Heavenly Father. Help us to forgive those that has trespassed against us, Heavenly Father. Lord, I just want to come to you and thank you for today, Heavenly Father, because we're not worthy of what you've done for us. Up until this day, Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you for the activities of our limbs, Lord. Someone woke up this morning and couldn't move, Heavenly Father. So you, we thank you for letting us move, Lord. We might have aches, Heavenly Father. But Lord, we know we're still alive. So thank you, Lord. Lord, we ask that you go into the hospitals and heal, Heavenly Father. Yes. Someone is having a heart transplant this morning, Heavenly Father. We ask that blood flow through their veins, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, we ask you to continue to heal those, Heavenly Father, yes. with rheumatoid arthritis, diabetes, Heavenly Father, heart complications, Lord, aches and pains, even the small ones, Heavenly Father. Yes. We ask that someone don't feel them on this day, Heavenly Father. Be with them, Lord. Lord, we ask that you go into the penitentiaries, Heavenly Father, and touch those prisoners, Heavenly Father. Let them reach out to you for whatever it is, Heavenly Father. Lord, we ask that you bless our babies today. Yes. So much is going on with our children today, Heavenly Father, that they're just getting shot up and killed everywhere, Heavenly Father. Bullet riddled bodies everywhere, Heavenly Father. So we ask that you just not only be with our children, be with our nation, Lord. Yes, Lord. Death is all among us, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. Lord, it used to be a time where women didn't get shot, Heavenly Father. And there, we're just reading about them all across this nation, Heavenly yes, Father. Bombs, bullets, Heavenly Father, just fall down, Heavenly Father. We just thank you that we haven't got hit yet, Heavenly Father. So we just ask your continuous blessings over us in our homes, Heavenly Father, our children, Heavenly Father. Lord, those that's under the sound of my voice, all I ask that you continue to bless them, Lord. Bless them unwillingly and willingly, Heavenly Father. And Lord, we thank you for it. Lord, I just ask your continuous blessings over Retrieve Your Life Ministries, Heavenly Father. Our members, Lord, Lord, I ask that you touch them wherever they're at, Heavenly Father, and let them know that they are missed, Heavenly Father. Yes. Bring them back into the fold. Not only this fold, any fold that you will have them to go, Heavenly yes. Father. Yes. Let us continue to pray, Heavenly Father. Yes. Lord, let us pray for our president, Heavenly Father that you have appointed, Lord, for whatever the reason is, Heavenly Father. We ask that you continue to bless our president and keep him safe and his family, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. But, Lord, most of all, we want to give you all the glory and the praise for everything that you've done for us, Heavenly Father. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who went to Calvary for us, Heavenly Father. Even though we still don't deserve it, Lord, we're not worthy, Heavenly Father, but we thank you today. Lord, we're going to continue to pray, uplift, 
and glorify you in this service today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. But he's been so good. Yes, he has. You know, when has God not been good to us? We got a lot to complain about, but don't think about really how good he's really been. Right. And the song says he's been so good. Yeah. So good. Yes. So good. Yeah. To me. Yes, he has. And you know, when you're going through, he dries all your tears away. And he's the only one that can turn your midnight into day. Yes, sir. That's why we should be saying, thank you, Lord. Yes. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Thank you. Because he's been so good. Yes, he has. Oh, good. You know, you, you're not going to get nothing better than that. No, People really don't know what they're missing out on. Because he's been so good. Yes. You know, each and every day, you know, no matter what I have to uh, go through or deal with, I was sharing with Brother Marlin and, and Minister Webb this morning as we were praying that, you know, sometimes you just want to jump ship. Mm, come on now. But I'm so glad I serve a God that speaks and talks to me and just say, stay on the ship. Yeah, all right, amen. You don't have to worry about the ship sinking. Uh -oh. All right. You might not have a lot of passengers, all right, but stay on the ship. All right, all right, wow. amen. <laughs> the ship is still sailing. All all right. Right. So you got you got to understand one thing. It ain't the ship that jumped. Uh -oh. Come on now. It's the people that jumped off the ship. Oh wow! Come on now. The ship is still sailing. Yeah. And he, he called you to be the captain. Yeah. Stay on the ship. Yeah. Stay on the ship, Stay on the ship. There's one thing the captain supposed to do is go down with the ship. Uh -huh. But God said the ship still sailing. Uh -oh. All right, all right. You don't get off the ship. Cause the passengers jump off the ship. You stay on the ship and keep guiding the ship. Oh, somebody. I hear you. I hear you. Amen. That's why that song. I won't complain. No matter what. No matter what. Cause he's been so good. Everybody in here, God has been good to. Yes, he has. We can't complain about nothing. And I, you know what, I, I, I just got to say this. God is going to reward them faithful few. Yes. I, I, I trust that and I believe that. They, 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 they stayed on the ship. <laughs> Amen. Amen. They didn't jump off the ship because it caught fire in one, in one section. <laughs> right, right. Because God put the fire out. Mm -hmm. And the ship still sailed. All right, all right. See, they don't realize that when you jump ship, yeah. some of them going to drown. Yeah, I'm right. They're not going to even make it to shore. Mm -hmm. okay. Come on now. They ain't going to never make it to dry land. All right. All right. All right. So they're going to drown in their sorrows. Oh, yeah. uh -oh. They're going to drown in their frustration. Yes. They're going to drown in their depression. <laughs> Better stay on the ship. Yeah, I'm telling you. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. October 28th. Praise the Lord. God is, 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 is a good God. Yes, and I just thank God each and every day for what he does and what he allows us to just taste, uh, just wake up another day to serve him. God doesn't have to be that grateful, graceful. And he definitely doesn't have to show that much mercy. You know, I thank God for his grace and his mercy and his love. Because we didn't have those three, right. some of us wouldn't be here. Amen. You know, I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday, and he was saying, you know, we, we dine every day. I say, yeah, yeah, we really are. You know, a lot, of, a lot of our people that we grew up with, classmates and everything else, you know, they, they're, they're, they're dying. And then there's only so a few left. And we need to be more attentive to what is going on around us today. Because the world, you know, we always talk about what the world is feeling. The world is, it ain't the world. It's the people. We always want to blame the world, but it's the people. The people are falling into the world. See, it's not the world. The world ain't failing. The world is surviving. The world is just doing what it needs to do. Yeah, come on. It's the people falling into the world. That's right. 
I, I drove by. I drove by a uh, little football game this morning. They was out there tailgating. I, I thought it was a Rams game or something. They, 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 they had the barbecue pits and everything out there. I ain't seen no Bible. I ain't seen. Amen. Amen. But it's good to be in the house of the Lord. I couldn't. I couldn't thank God enough this morning. Uh, it's some some days you just don't want to do. But I, I, I was telling my, my friend yesterday, I said, you know what, I don't care. No, it doesn't matter how I feel, how I hurt, how I ache. I'm going to church. <laughs> I'm going to church. I, 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 can't, I can't speak for other folks that, that say, you know, they, they, they don't feel good or they can't make it. I'm going to make it no matter what. If I can get here, I'm going to get here. And, you know, it, it's... Through all we have to endure, God is still God. Yes, yes, yes. And everything that we endure, God brings us through. Amen. The least we can do is give him some worship. Yes. The least we can do is come visit him every night. That's the least we can do. It ain't like God tell you to come to church every day. God asked for your time a couple of times out of the week, and people would fail to do that. And I'm just, you know, I, it, I'm not, I'm not sad, I'm not angry, but I'm disappointed in people. I woke up this morning, told my wife, I'm just so tired of people. People, and I'm not tired of them to say that, you know, I don't care about them or anything, because I do. I, I, I'm tired of people because I'm, I'm sad and it hurts mm -hmm. yeah. to watch people right. yes. not come to God. Right. It, it, it hurts because you want you want everybody you know yep. to get that relationship with God. Amen. And as much as you talk and as much as you beg or whatever you do and they still don't move. Baby, heaven and hell is real. Yes. And just because you keep sitting on your butt talking about you believe in God, don't mean that's your ticket into heaven. People need to wake up. Amen? Amen. 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 Y'all know how we do. Uh, this morning, I'm going to talk about the cleanse. I'm going to go back and have a, have a flashback with Hillary and, and, and Bill. <laughs> And while the Clinton was still in the governor's mansion in Arkansas, one night Chelsea, she came into the bedroom and said, Mommy, tell me a story, please. And Hillary said, Baby, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. Can't you just go to bed? And Chelsea said, I tried, Mommy, but I, I can't sleep, so please, please tell me a story. Hillary thought for a moment, and then she said, Okay, baby, I'll tell you what. You just jump up here in bed with me, and when your daddy finally gets home, We'll both get to hear a story. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Say it like you mean. This, this is my Bible. This is my God. The Word of God in whom I will trust. The Word of God in whom I will trust. Amen. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you this morning, God. We just want to come to you this morning, Father, on our, on our begging knees and just ask you to just bless us this morning with your word. Touch us this morning with your word, O oh God. Lift us up with your word this morning, Father. Give us strength through your word this morning, God. Give us joy through your word this morning, Father. And let the joy and, and everything that you've given us this morning, let us go out and touch somebody else with your word. Father, let me just decrease as you increase in me. Holy Spirit, rise. Awaken. Speak with my mouth. On this day, October 28th, these are not things we're asking his name, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Emmanuel. If you would turn your Bibles to the book of Romans, still in chapter 12. Amen. We're going to stay in chapter 12 for a moment. Romans chapter 12, starting at verse 3. We, last week, you know, we did, we would, we talked in verses, uh, Romans uh, chapter 1 and 2. Amen. Chapter 12. Yeah, we talked about stand firm, stand firm against the word last week, and you know, chapter Romans chapter twelve, uh, one, one and two. 
And so this this week we're going to be in, in Romans chapter 12 still. We're going to start at verse 3. Amen. 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 Romans chapter 12, verse 3. And I'm going to be reading out the NIV. Amen. In the Bible, the word of God reads us thus. Romans chapter 12, starting at verse 3. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body and many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ, we, though many, form one body. And each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophecy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. You may be seated in the presence of God. Amen. Briefly, I, I just want to talk to you all about this morning. Using what God has given you. Uh oh. Using what God has given you. We have all been given gifts down through the years. Amen. Amen. And some of these gifts were practical and others not so practical. But some have been helpful and others not so helpful. But no gift is really practical or helpful, however, unless we, the people of God, start to use them. There are so many people walking around today, even in church, sitting dormant on the gifts that God has blessed them with. Or shall I say, graced them with. They're sitting on their gifts. And God has given each Christian at least one spiritual gift. These gifts, no matter how great they are, are worthless unless we use what God has given us. We got to start learning to use what God has given us to use to help build up the kingdom of God. We got to sit and start using these gifts. God is, is, is graceful with his gifts. Yeah. He graciously gives us a gift to serve him. And we don't even use the gift. Mm -hmm. huh. Let's look at point number one. And, and what I, I first thing we want to reflect in, in verse three, because each one should give a sober, honest evaluation of his gifts. Amen? Amen. Not in pride. And you, you only fool yourself into thinking that God has given more than he has. There's a whole lot of people think they got all kind of gifts. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. That people do have multiple gifts. But some people just be faking that funk. Let's just say, like, 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 them, them, uh, 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 I know what I want to say. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Oh, I know what I want to say. I'm just saying them all, them all, them all, them all, them all, them all. Them tongue speakers. Uh-oh. You know, them gifted tongue speakers. You know the ones that have to have class. Got to be taught how to speak in tongues. When we're talking about God graciously gives us a gift. If you speak in tongues, that's, 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 that's kind of like, almost like prophesying. Huh. Huh. So we got to reflect that, that, that we got to think about it and not fool ourselves into thinking that God has given us more than he has. Everybody doesn't have the same gifts. Everybody doesn't have multiple gifts. But everybody has at least one. Okay. <laughs> However, if a man is sober and honest, he will not deny or ignore what gifts God has given him. And these are things we have to reflect upon. 
when you look at verse 3, for by the grace given me, stop. That's what Paul said. For by the grace given to me, reflect on that. These are gifts of God. And we don't even want to use them. Probably a lot of people just use their spiritual gifts at work and don't even know they're using the gifts. But when they come to church, they can't use them spiritual gifts for God. But we can use them for man. And I'm just, I'm just saying. Each one, which should always be so, you can't be drunk and use your spiritual gifts. I just seen a lot of drunk people try to preach or try to teach. Amen. I'll try to talk to you about the word. And then, you know, the thing about it is they know the word. And what they're saying is they're not, they're not lying. They're just not sober and honest. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Y'all yeah. know a whole bunch of drunks that they can give you that word. They ain't saying that they can't, they don't know the word. Right. But they, they got to reflect and, and use that gift. You got to be sober and honest <laughs> to utilize this gift. Yeah, right. Wow. Point number two, you got to remember. We need to remember that we are all members of one body, and that's the body of Christ. Not your little measly body, because your little body don't, don't, don't mean nothing. We got to remember that we are all members of one body, the body of Christ. We also need to remember that God has given us different positions and gifts within that body. Everybody doesn't have the same position. Everybody doesn't have the same gifts within that body. And we need to remember that we are members with each other, not, not our, just ourselves. Right. We should be anyway. Yeah. We're a team of, and each one has his specific place to feel <laughs> and that spiritual need. Now, I always, uh, this, 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 uh, I've been mostly talking about leaders and how leaders are really, they're, they're really the brokers of gifts. But yet we don't utilize those gifts he gives us, you know what I'm saying? Because every resource that God provides should be in use. It should be in use. But how many of us are really utilizing what God has given us? Think about it. You know, when he, when he talks about the gift of prophecy, it is to challenge others by de declaring God's truth and calling for action. Prophesying. To serve others, meet their needs. Not your needs, oh, but to meet the needs of others. How about that gift of teaching? Where you're supposed to explain the truth so that others can understand and apply it instead of getting up here talking all this nonsense and, and, and talking about your house and your nice car. And what about giving people the truth of the word of God? You're supposed to be teaching. Not talking about you. It's not about you. And we always talk about we have these gifts. How about exhortation, encouraging, and strengthening, and inspiring others to be at their best? Instead of putting people down and, and talking about them and, and putting them in a hole and telling them they, 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 they need to, they're going to be prosperous and they need to give, continue to give, and God's going to give to you. And, but ain't nobody getting rich but you. Hello, somebody. Keep on giving because God wants you to prosper. God wants you to be rich. God wants you to have that mansion. Oh, but you already got yours. Just keep giving. Give. Give and God will give to you. By... This is exhortation. This is how we exhort it. Our, our members. This is this how we pimp, I mean, excuse me, exhort our members. <laughs> we are talking about exhortation, right? <laughs> I, 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 I mean, pimp slipped out, I'm sorry. Uh -oh. <laughs> The gift of giving. Yeah. To generously share what God has given. That means your gift. See, it ain't just about the money in your pocket. Come on, man. How about sharing your gift that God gave you? How about sharing your time? How about sharing your wisdom, your knowledge? See, we're not really paying, we're not really doing and doing these gifts the way God gave them to us, we're doing them the way we feel we need to do them. Right, right. 
You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. The gift of leadership to govern and oversee others so that the group moves forward. Come on now. If the group is moving forward, if you're teaching leaders and you're a good leader, how come have your... Come on. You oversee others so that the group moves forward. That's like being on that ship again. Ship goes forward. It doesn't go backwards. It goes forward. There's so many people in leadership. They so busy putting their, their ships in reverse. And see, when you put your ship in reverse, you and your congregation start reliving all y'all past all over again. All that baggage you put in behind you, you, you fall right back into it and bring it right up in the church. Leadership, the gift of leadership, we got to use that. Now, how about this gift of mercy to emphasize with and cheer and show compassion to those who hurt instead of laughing at somebody that's hurt, instead of ridiculing somebody that's hurt, instead of talking about somebody that's hurt. You know how we gossip in the church? Yeah. Somebody be hurting and they, there's somebody back there snickering. Or they talking about them. Or the first thing they say, you know she's faking. Ain't nothing wrong with it. How do you know? See, but we all call ourselves Christians. But we have no mercy for nobody else. But when we going through, baby, we look for all kind of mercy. Huh? We want, we want mercy to run to, our, run to us right quick, right away. You know, we want to just, we want to just put, put, put our problems in the microwave and, and punch sin and say, ding, mercy, come on out. And that's why this last point I want to talk about is respond. We reflect it, we remember, now we have to respond. Because we must respond by understanding what the gifts that God has given us. These, 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 these seven gifts I talked about. We got to respond. We got to understand what these gifts are. And they're not what you didn't claim them to be. To use the way you want to use them. These seven gifts, prophecy, service, teaching, exhortation, giving, leadership, mercy, God gave them to you to operate in him. Then we got to respond by using these gifts by faith. Hello, somebody. Hello. By faith. See, when you start using them by you, that's why don't nothing happen. That's why some of them don't even use their gifts. Because they have no faith in the gift that God gave them. Which means, of course, you have no faith in God. They don't see that, but. And that's why, of course, in, in, in preaching this sermon, you all, I, I pray and hope that you will want to explain each of the gifts listed in this passage we was talking about. Paul described these seven spiritual gifts distributed to different members in the body of Christ. And like any good leader, he recognized his role as a broker of gifts. That's, that's, what, that's what the pastor really is. That's what the bishop, pope, whatever you want to call yourself, you're supposed to be the broker of gifts. You oversee these people with all these gifts. You make sure they're operating in these gifts. That's easier said than done, people. Because no matter what this person up here says, it's still up to that person to operate in that gift. We can't stand up here and make somebody operate in their gift. But I, I'm going to take a page from Minister Williams because he always says, well, Pastor, who's teaching that? Amen. Who is teaching that? Who's teaching people how to use their gifts or to utilize their gifts? Who's going through the through this through this, through this 
this sermon, I mean this, this passage, and taking each gift and showing them what the gifts really are and challenging them to operate in that gift. This is why a lot of people don't know what their gifts are. And even when we, and even in this church, when we've tried to teach on spiritual gifts, people be talking about, I don't know what my gift is. If you look, you gotta come to the class and learn. And you gotta pray. And you gotta ask God, what is it you want me to do? What is my gift? Show me. Teach me. A lot of people operate in their gifts every day and don't even realize it. I've never been a big fan of, of, of this show, Ellen DeGeneres. Never really watched it. Comes on 3 o'clock every day on Channel 5. I've never really watched that show. Because I'm like, I ain't really an Ellen person. You know what I'm saying? I would rather walk, watch Mary and talk about the DNA and the, the, the pregnancy and you are the father and all that. that I, I, I get a kick out of all that. But lately, I've been drawn to Ellen. And the more I've watched this show, I told my wife this a Friday, we watched, I said, you know what? I said, this woman has the biggest heart I have ever seen. Mm -hmm. I said, it's genuine. She gives away money like she give away shoes. I'm serious. I watched this one woman, she brought, she brought this one woman on, she brought her on the show once. And the woman, you know, they was going through this thing, her and her, her, her family, and, you know, she, she lost her job and didn't have no money. And Ellen gave us, gave, you know, I think she, she gave a new car that day. She got a new car. Her name is, I can't remember, oh, man, Lisa Jarman. That's her name, Lisa Jarman. And after that, this Friday, she came back on the show, and I don't want to get an update. Well, now the woman has stage four cancer. Breast cancer. And they said it was uh, going on into her lungs. Come to find out, she was telling a story and then she said, you know, by the grace of God, <laughs> when she went back to the doctor after the chemo, chemo treatments, the cancer in her lung was gone. I mean, her kidneys was gone. She just had the stage four breast cancer. She said, you know what? I'm not worried about that either because by God's grace, that's going to be taken care of too. See. Ellen, on the other hand, bless her heart. She told the woman, yeah, you well, you know, we're gonna, we, you, you like family to us and this, this, and that. And the chair that this woman sat in, they came down, they, they, they had somebody, one of her, her staff was sitting in the church. She got up and they had her name in, 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 engraved on the chair, Lisa John. Can't nobody else sit in that chair but Lisa John. I said, so, I said, so you're going to be coming back to the show quite often. <laughs> then Ellen turned around and gave her another $25,000. Wow. I say, say, this will help you to pay your doctor bills. Yeah. I say, my, I say, look at God. What I'm, I'm, what I'm getting around to is this woman has the gift of giving. Yes. She's utilizing a, a spiritual gift, and I don't know if she realizes it or not. She may have. I don't know her, I don't know her, spiritual, her spirituality. I don't know. But I just saw and I felt in me the genuineness of this woman in her heart. Not like a lot of these other, and I'm going to call them out, Oprah and Steve, they doing it for the, for the ratings. This woman could care less about ratings. She had these group of boys I said, young men on a show early this week, last week. They from Brooklyn. They ride the train and they dance on the train. And they was doing this dance. They, they had to set up the stage, set up like a like a like a, 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 a subway train. And they danced and did their little thing, right? They sat down and she was talking to them. And they, and they was just they was just grateful to just to be on the show. You hear what I'm saying? They like, okay, we're on Ellen, we're getting exposed. They like, oh, thank you, Ellen, thank you. They hugging and all that, and they thanking her. <clears throat> then she say, how much do y'all normally get tip on a, on a day? They say, the highest we got maybe 50 to to $100. Ellen said, 
And she thought the man said $5,200. Say $5,200. He said, no, $5,200. Oh, <laughs> so she turned around and she had her staff bring out this big old giant cap, about as big as round from, that, from, 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 from the table back to here. Had Ellen on the front. And she told the car, I said, well, we're going to put, put $10,000 in it. Brought $10,000, I put it in the hat. She said, you know what, Joe? Bring out another $10,000. I said, brought another $10,000, put it in the hat. Wow. They brought another, bring another $10,000. That was $30,000. They said, you know what, Joe? Just bring out another $10,000. So he come out with a stack of $10,000. I mean, but I'm going to come out with $10,000 stacks of money. Throwing it in the hat. Then... <laughs> Them guys was losing their mind. You hear me? They, you hear them all the time. Forty thousand. I mean, we got forty thousand. You know, what we can do it. Forty thousand. She said, "You know what? Stop this shit. You know what, Joe? Just forget it." She said, "You know what?" She says, "Titty y'all. Just bring out a hundred thousand dollars." Wow. <laughs> and so each one of them can get ten thousand dollars. I say, "Look at God." Okay. Then on the show, she had your boy D. Okay. Whatever his name is, come out and sit. He said, "Yeah, I know them. They up there from my, they from my hood up there in Brooklyn. They, they perform all the time. This and this and this and that." And I'm sitting there and I'm like, "So how come you ain't gave him ten thousand dollars, brother?" Right, brother. And I'm sitting here, Ellen. He on Ellen's show, and Ellen, you know, Ellen, Ellen just gave these kids a hundred thousand dollars. You've been knowing them for years. You ain't gave a damn. Right. When I talk about the gift of giving, <laughs> this woman gave from her heart. Right. Right. Now Diddy got us. He got these three schools, these charter schools. He he built a new one now in Brooklyn. This is third one. He got one in Connecticut, one in uh, the Bronx, and now he built one in Brooklyn. One in one in Brooklyn. Now he built one in the Bronx. And Ellen. As, as nice as she is, gave him a $50,000 check for his school. Wow. I say, man. I said, now all of a sudden everybody with, with money, the, 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 the thing is to, to build you a school, huh? The Brown build a school, everybody won't build a school, huh? <laughs> I'm talking about this gift of giving. Because I just seen to me in my heart and I felt this woman was so genuine. I watch this show every day now. I'm missing all the DNA shows on Mari. That's, that's, that's killing me. But I, you know, I'm watching this woman. I'm, I'm just so I'm just so caught up with her giving. And then she had this contest with her, 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 her audience. She said, you know, because she had this thing at the end of this, she called a 12 days giveaway. I didn't know about that. She gives stuff away for 12 days in a row. Same audience. They don't change the audience. They're there for the full 12 days. So they had this contest. Whoever got these most, most answers right will come back with 12 days of giving. Well, the side that Lisa Jarman was on had answered six questions, so they, they won. And at the end of the show, y'all say, oh, they, they forget it. Everybody come back for the 12 days of uh, giving away. I say, get out of here. Wow. So but, uh, when, that, when that time rolls around the holidays, those 12 days, that same audience is there for them 12 days every day, and they're getting free. She's giving away stuff to them each and every day for 12 days. <coughs> and from my, from my recollection, what, what they've told me, she's even giving away the whole order. Some of them even gotten cars. Yeah. I said, audience full of cars? She just, but see what I love about her is, some of it's her money, a lot of it's money from donations. Like the woman said, they donated her that car. And then a lot of it's Chef, Chef, Shutterfly. They give away a lot of money. Walmart gives away a lot of money. I say, this show is genuine. This woman is, is helping people. She's not, she not doing it for no ratings. She can care less about some ratings. And I said, you know, I just, I was just drawn to her show now at 3 o'clock. I mean, I'm, I'm just drawn to just, just see what she's going to do next. Wow. 
I say, wow, it, it's just amazing to me. And then I, I, when I look at this, this gift of giving, uh, that's the fifth gift. Now, I go back and look at the gift number three, the gift of teaching to explain the truth so that others can understand and apply it. We're too busy not telling people the truth and forgiving them nonsense. That's why they can't apply nothing. We don't want to tell people the real truth out here so they can apply it to their lives. We'd rather feed them junk so they can't apply nothing. And that's what's going on in the church. This is why the church is decreasing. This is why the church has a bad name. Nobody really wa nobody wants the truth. Nobody wants the truth. Everybody wants to keep getting lied to and be happy. Yeah. Yeah. They say they've been to church. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my, 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 my former church, they, they got a, a concert today. They got a live recording today. They're making a CD. I said, well, praise the Lord. I, I got an invitation. He said, you coming? I said, no. Right. Okay. I said, Pastor, you not coming? No. Look, y'all do what y'all got to do. Yeah, right now, y'all off the show. And, 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 you know, been there and done that one with y'all. I'm not going back down that road. I'm going to stay to what he called me to do, truth. Bottom line. You know? And I, I, nothing against what y'all doing. Y'all can sing, shout, and do whatever you want to do. I mean, praise the Lord. But y'all, what y'all trying to do right now? Y'all, 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 y'all looking for recognition. And then y'all say y'all, you know, we we sing it to the Lord. No, you know, y'all singing to get some recognition. Y'all, y'all singing for yourselves. Y'all singing to get recognized and hopefully get paid. Hello. Let's just keep it real. So, I wish them well. God bless you. But I'll pass. <laughs> Using what God has given us. Using what God has given you. All I can say to you all this evening, I mean this morning, is utilize your gifts. Stop, stop being dormant with the gifts that God has given you. Stop sitting on your gifts. And if you have multiple gifts, use those gifts. And, 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 you know, I, I want people to understand and know that the gift of tongues, if, if, you, if, you, if you're out there listening, read the word, read the Bible, read Corinthians. It'll tell you what that gift of tongues is all about. Can't nobody teach you how to speak. You don't have to go to a class. The Bible will tell you clearly and specifically that if there's no interpreter, if, you, if you're going to speak, there has to be an interpreter. That. Someone has to interpret what you just said to the, to, the, to, the, to the members of the congregation. And he also tells you that if there's no interpreter, for you to be quiet. Didn't say that you couldn't speak in tongues and talk to him. Just said you to, be, you to be quiet. You talk directly to him. Because there's no interpreter. So, you know, when you stand up and speak and all that, and there's no interpreter, this is all for sure. And when you all saying the same thing, that's all show because you're not going to speak. No. Okay. Let's just keep it real with God for a change. And not be worrying about ourselves. Let's utilize and use what God has given us. Amen. 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 Emmanuel.